my, my phone seems to be working now. I feel like someone's out there to make my ass is big. My ass is big. Holy hell. You know, you look kind of like a demon when I put these back. Holy hell, you look like a, a big butt. You look like a big butt. I'm sorry, that is so rude to say. You look fine, sir. I just said. Uh, I'll be you. Be you with a big butt. And something with these glasses. Something weird. I got it. Get a hold of yourself, man. Get a hold of that. I said, okay, okay. Gotta get my head straight. This can't be seen. Hey, man. Dude, what we expect? It's the best I can do, brother. Dude, you gotta put these glasses on. I don't need to put these glasses, man. I can see everything I need to see. Listen, you crazy mother. I'm gonna make you eat this garbage can if you don't put the glasses on. I'm gonna eat garbage to see what you see. Look, oh. dude, I don't wanna do this. But you're not one of them. Listen to me. We gotta do this together.
Patrick Cunningham in the house. We got a great special for you right after this commercial break. Stay tuned. Ah! Moment, my my beautiful wife Jamila. retirement and get in front of your your screen for a moment. Yeah, man. It felt good. I think I want to do some more. You, what's that? You want to act some more? Th yeah. Do some more theater, some more acting. Acting is easy. This, but you, uh, you acted in our former uh, iteration known as Darge Productions. You yep. were a major thespian during all of that. Uh, my my. Pretty much, you might remember me as uh, Colonel Crank, Tom Crank. And I wasn't—I was actually thinking of uh, the weird creature you played in Mount Tabor. Park. Oh yeah. Jack's uh, Steel. Yeah, yeah. What was the influence of that? That was the 2000, uh, 2001 uh, monolith monkey scene. Watching a lot of Kubrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it. I don't know. If you remembered it, I, I must have done a good job. Sounds great. Well, that's. I'm sort of hoping to uh, uh, bring uh, back some of that. Uh, uh, I, you know, I look, people hate me when I talk like this, uh, but I'm thinking like I might. Uh, there might be a director's cut in the works someday of the Harlow one. Sounds good. I don't know. And Do you, maybe an extended scene with the Monkey Man. I would love to reprise that that character. Yeah. Bring it back. Yeah. Well, so, but yeah, to your your other uh, mentioning there, um, you know, Colonel Crank was, uh, uh, that was awesome. I, I forgot. You just completely created that on the spot. Didn't you? I just, it was in me yeah. somehow, and it just came out. And uh, I was, you, you're a great influence on me, and uh, he's a great director. He gave me all the freedom I needed. Yeah, well, I, that was back when uh, Mr. Sargent, Clinton Sargent, and I uh, worked as a, a team, and, and we would uh, kind of alternate between good cop, bad cop, just whatever we could get out of free actors. Yeah. Uh, 
is sort of the, what you have to do when people are there. You feed them pizza, beer, you hope for the best. And they say, I don't It was the best. That. This is what my character is about. And you have to be open to those kinds of things. And we were. You guys were people. very generous. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, and talk about generous. Let's, uh, let's go down the little uh, business. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. You were... Uh, you were once uh, a young country boy outside of, not Benita, but what is the hometown? I grew up in Jasper, Oregon, Jasper. outside of Pleasant Hill, which was outside of Pleasant, or outside of Eugene. That's so, right, Jasper, Oregon. Jasper, Oregon. Do you remember your third grade elementary teacher in Jasper, Oregon? Is she uh, got her here? Yeah. Hey. It's Mrs. Crabapple. Oh, my God, thank you. No, we don't. We don't have Mrs. Crabapple here, but I always wanted to do that. Yeah, what was it like growing up in Jasper? Um, it was pretty beautiful. It was a lot of country, a lot of hills, How a lot of running. Eugene, is it? It's like 20 minutes, 20 minutes outside of Eugene. And it's rural. rural as you can get, yeah. Do you guys have acreage? Or? 10 acres, yeah. Half field, half hills, and... So we only uh, have nine and a half. Oh, uh, well. Skyline. So, you know, I'm not, you know, nine and a half is pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, a lot of... Girls would be impressed with that. Not as much as 10, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, Jasper was like what? It was, uh, 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 who would you compete with in, in intramural schools? Uh, we, we were we were single A, I think. So So who was you like your mortal enemy? Was our high school? Marist. What? Marist. Marist. Yeah, well, we was, I think Marist and... Uh, I don't know. I didn't really play sports. I got cut from the fifth grade basketball team, and that was right, the end of my. That was the end of my. That was the end of my my sports, and yeah. then I then I picked up the drumsticks and started playing drums. In high school or in fifth grade? Well, in fifth grade, I, I started on the on the bass drum. Uh huh. Then so you just had a kick. Didn't you? I I had a I had a mallet, okay. and a and a standalone bass drum that I got to hit. Any uh, that that came later in high school, uh, in uh, Windoms. I, I I played a little bit, yeah. So was yeah. It, did they have orchestra? Or have yeah, I was in wind ensemble, and uh, I also funny funny story. Back when I was playing the timpanis, we um, I remember being back there. It was in the back of the the, the school, or not the school, but the back of the. the the back row of the the ensemble, and that year we had gotten a brand new tuba, and the tuba player who was who was playing the brand new tuba sat right in front of me, and I was really good at flipping my drumsticks until one day I flipped them up in the air and it landed, and it put a ding right into the bell of the tuba. And it, the school hadn't had it for more than a month, and I put the first ding wow. in the tuba. Wow. Was that, yeah. did they keep you on with Tiffany or something? They did. Yep, they did. And just a little, little accidents. Little, little accidents will happen, so uh, they forgave Steve me. and I know about that. We were, our first band was uh, Pink Milk in high school. We were in the jazz band. Uh, <sighs> well, my first real band was actually a, a band called... Uh, as you may have heard before in a Bad Finger documentary, I was in a band called the Middle Fingers. And I'd just like to point out that, um, speaking of today, Jan 26, that uh, I, uh, I was the birthday boy. I am no longer the birthday boy. Tom Nims, you are the birthday boy. So happy birthday to Tom. Uh, yeah, Tom. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, so we, we formed Pink Milk because we were with the jazz band. And we would like we were kind of renowned for like slipping in purple haze solos in the middle of jazz standards. Remember we did that mm -hmm. one seaside jazz festival, something like that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was Cal Basin's great. Count Basie, no chasing. And we slipped purple haze in. And Roe would let us. Mm -hmm. So flash forward, we somehow graduate that Catholic high school. That Matt Horn is principal of now. As you know, that I was watching a stream the other day. I fear. Um, or he's vice principal. He's got Welter's job. That's what he is. Uh, point being, we got to this 
thing on earth they call college, the university system. Uh, and at some point I got to the U of O, and Steve and I, after various drifting experiments, we came back together, and we started getting some music going, and, uh, thing, and then again, things didn't work. It's the life of a musician, you go through lots of, it's like marriage, lots of marriages, celebrities know what I'm talking about. Uh, the point is that uh, when, when we were hanging out there in sort of the dark days, uh, one of the bright lights was this uh, coffee boy, Kinkos, that uh, apparently played drums, and this kid from Jasper. And uh, I'll let you tell the rest of it. Oh, man. Man, I, uh, yeah, I was working at the Kinkos on campus, and uh, one day, young Steve Sibula walked in, and he needed something copied. And I said, oh, hey, dude. I saw your show at Taylor's last weekend. You guys were opening for Jollymon. And uh, you're like, oh, thanks. And I said, uh, you know anybody looking for a drummer? And he said, oh, yeah, we are. And I said, I said, I said Let's, let, all right, here's my number. And uh, you guys called me. And I remember... We uh, sat up, I met you guys, I, I hauled my drums to some rickety old barn behind the uh, Bijou's Theater. Oh, yeah, Barnes Barn. Barnes played Timbales. Chris Barnes, the governor? Yes, the, 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 and you, in Barnes, we had our first show opening for Jolly Mon at the uh, Harpo's Blue Note. I, I had played that gig before opening for Jolly Mon at Harpo's Blue Note, and uh, I was out, but I just wanted to bring to your attention, uh, maybe Patrick, I don't know, I'll, I'll bring this back to the fight camera. Um, mm -hmm. Uh-oh. We're holding a mic box with, as you can see, Jolly Mon. Jolly Mon. So uh, this is uh, this is this new guy. Is, I believe this was the one of the Laguna mic box. That that's history right there. So yeah. So yeah, we played our first show. And uh, we stayed to, we, we played. We played a lot of good shows. We got that to, band was called? The Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was, you guys were sort of, uh, kind of a, a new iteration of Psychedelia in like 92, 93 that, that was, you know, wasn't yeah. really going around. You guys had like your own flavor. Like, it was, uh, I think Clint was pretty inspired by... Uh, Oh, probably like Galaxy 500 and um, some English psych post-Velvet Underground bands. And I was really into the Velvet Underground for a long time. And by the time I got really tired of the Velvet Underground, Clint turned me on to Galaxy 500 and I became obsessed with them. And um, yeah, so it was just a good, a good match. And... We got to play a lot of good shows. I finally got to play the Wow Hall and right. played John Henry. Played Wow Hall a bunch of times, actually. And um, yeah, it was kind of like my first real. I guess it was my only first band. Well, no, I was I was in a band. <laughs> I was in a band before that called Super Fudge. What was that like? What, it was with it was with uh, I, I was I was in two bands before that. The first band I was ever in was called Sumo Sue and the Fat Ladies of Wrestling, and that was with my friend Brent Carnes, who's now in the Muddy River Nightmare Band. Um, it was him and our friend Tammy and our friend Bob, and we rehearsed upstairs. Um, at the apartment behind the Dairy Queen on 13th and Kincaid, across the hall from Pat Yonnelly's band, The Bat Cows. Yeah, and... Um, what was his band? 
Well, he had a ton of them, but he had Black Dahlias, he had uh, Undertakers, yeah, and so, um, anyways, uh, that was my first band, second band was with a guy named Scott Kirkpatrick and Bob from Sumo Sue, we were called Super Fudge, our friend Jeff Sellers sang in it for a little bit, I think we did a cover of uh, Seek and Destroy. Uh, but we were kind of going towards kind of like a Nirvana meets exploited type of hard rock thing. And that dissolved. And then I didn't play drums for a while, but then I started wanting to play them again. And that's when I met Steve. And I don't think I've ever stopped playing in one way or the other since then. Like, I don't think I ever haven't had a project <laughs> since then. That's, uh, I, that's what I love about you, man. You, you've always done that. Uh, it's uh, uh, a feat to stay so busy, especially with uh, all that footwork you're doing. Uh, oh, fancy footwork. We uh, we have a comment uh, oh. that uh, I, I am not being loud enough, and uh, that's surprising. That's usually not what people say about me. Let me see if I can fix that a little bit there. Hey, hey, hey! One, two, one, two. So the rest, the half of this show, you're gonna have to listen to me now. Um, but yeah, so then there was Juniper. I remember. Oh. <laughs> yep. Didn't, didn't we that do was... a show where, like, were you at that Steve with uh, Schwani? We were trying to do like a oh, in a basement. Movie? Yeah, in yeah, a basement was, party. Yeah. It was it was Wookie. Juniper, Jack Mackerel, and a early an early uh, an early version of Swoon Twenty Three. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, we were kind of like a cross between Galaxy Five Hundred and Seam. It was sort of like loud, quiet, moody type stuff. Yeah, it was cool. It was. It's good. Well, but I, oh, and then there was uh, the Bella Lowe. Well, I, I came in as their second drummer. You were the second drummer. Yeah. Right. Did you do recordings with them? No. Nope. They, they only did one album. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And was, uh, but that was both when uh, Jason Bianco. Or yep. And, yeah. and uh, Boussoulet, right? Alon Boussoulet, yeah. He was playing Clint. Yeah. Alon on sitar. And uh, things drifted out of there, and then you were in this other phenomenal... The High Violets, yeah. The High Violets. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, I don't know what we're privy to talk about, but there <laughs> once was a little tour that we... Uh, <laughs> That's we right, you were... You, for a you were, or light guy to come along. You were literally my our hired drinking buddy and handler for we, me. I feel like <clears throat> you and I turned into, like, Keith Moon and Harry Nilsson. Yeah, it was, it was... On the streets of L.A. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. We sleep near each other because it was too loud. It was the very quiet sleepers, the highlights were. We right. Were we were... We were... Well, I think it's... I think it's that... I think it's that... That... I don't know, maybe it's every kid I know, or every person I know who grew up Catholic, whenever time I get around them, yes. we make each other giggle, yes. and we yes. just can't stop laughing. Yeah, yeah. And so I think well, that's probably what we had. Laugh at church. Yeah. Laugh at church. And so I think that's probably what happened with you and I. Whatever and you do, don't do this. Yeah. yeah. So um, that was... Yeah, that was that was a good time. It was so fun. And then, except didn't one of us get eighty six in Eugene, it was like the homecoming. You had a big crowd there. The... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't it was remember. Very I don't. Very confusing. It was a lot, huge crowd. A lot of. I got. I got thrown out of. I got thrown out of. Um... <laughs> Sacramento? No. No, no. I got thrown out of the club in Eugene. It was Eugene. Yeah. It was your homecoming. It was our homecoming show, and we were you all... some fans, though, too. We had tons of fans there, like, yeah. But you had personal, like, local... I had I had my my family, my family, my godparents were there, and their family, and it was it was huge. Yeah. But, and I was well-behaved mm -hmm. until everybody left. Right, right. And then... 
for some Very reason for some reason I decided I was gonna do a karate chop on a on a chair yes. and I started saying stuff like I know about this town <laughs> I know <laughs> Eugene, I've been here before. I know all about Eugene. And the uh, the poor kid be the poor kid behind the bar was just like, "You're out, <laughs> out." And so, so I, I know it was a uh, yeah. It was uh, what club was it? It was um. It was a little. It was like Lucky's eats. Lucky's cigar shop or whatever. Anyways, they kicked me out. Unfortunately, I didn't get to load my gear. So everybody in the band had to take care of loading my gear and basically babysitting me until we got home. Right. So. Well, uh, I think that uh, uh, what I'd like to uh, do is, uh, I think I'm going to take a little ad break. And uh, there, there is one band we left out that we forgot to mention that you were in. And uh, I think uh, let's get back to that after this quick commercial. All right. Anyway, yeah, it's it again. And, and what I was getting at is, you know, people are all acting like, uh, you know, I don't have um, uh, other stuff to write. Um, anyway, it's Downtown Blend Taste City Coffee. Uh, it's always good. And um, it's Saffer Brothers. And, and you're going to love it. So just drink it. I'm drinking it right now. And uh, I had to come... Get, you know, I'm agoraphobic, all right? That's that's what I'm getting at, okay? You know, it's it's hard for me to leave the house, and I'm, I'm coming down to the recording studio, I'm hanging out with Paul. He's awesome. But um, you guys are acting like I don't have things to write, and I'm writing. I'm writing comedy all the time. I'm basically at uh, volume 40 of, of, of my comedy work, and... Um, I'm really enjoying the Downtown Blend Taste City Coffee from Safford Brothers. I guess I'm a little agitated today, but have some. You're going to love it. It is always good. Join the legion of satisfied advertisers who have already established a connection with the Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. They could tell you how it's improved their business. But let us save them the trouble. Advertising with us will increase your business. 15, 25, even as much as 35%. Join these other fine advertisers and see your business improve. Talk about my other bands no, mentioned, the Satin Chaps.
Yes, of course. That was uh, that was Stargirl, and that was uh, that was a song by the Bolsheviks, uh, living with the proletariat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there remember was a band called I, the Bolsheviks. I remember my days in the Bolsheviks. I was kind of on a call when needed basis, but I always got the secret message. You guys usually put like a a little slip under my yeah, under, yeah like a little a slip of paper and uh, yeah I always got the call when you needed it well, I was there our original bolstered so Clint Sargent and I uh, uh, you know fill in a little hole there the uh, Marshall Plan was actually the uh, resolution of a project called the Butler and his Freaks right which was the resolution of another project called the Go Brothers um, and Bardo and the Garbage Beans aspect of those two acts from Monmouth and uh, way a little before your time. But uh, uh, the Freaks broke up, Marshall Plan formed, and uh, uh, where I was going with that, somewhere. The Freaks, so, uh, well, yes, so we had a resolution of that moment that very quickly, and it became that band, the Bolsheviks. So Clint and I recorded these songs together, and the original drummer, Joey Fitzgibbon. He right, he went on to do some cool stuff. Side part was yeah, the yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, on and off, yeah. been in touch online in the various forms. But yeah, he was great, a wonderful, and uh, yeah, very great drummer. He was kind of one of them Ringo, just straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no messing around. He also went to Central Catholic with Steve and I. Good giggling. Good giggler. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, we did Bolsheviks, and uh, the first album was cassette release in 1992 uh, called The Bolsheviks. And so uh, then you came on for Living with the Proletary. Star Girl was one of those songs. And uh, Star Girl was actually. The lyrics, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, I always, at least the, the later versions, I think had a lot to do with the, uh, the love of my life at that time, Jamila Hart, who mm -hmm. I had fallen madly in love with during the recording of that album. And she went off to the Peace Corps in Africa. And so I'm not sure exactly the timing of everything, but I know that when we sang that live, I was often thinking of, of lovely Jamila and Nisha. And I was very lonely. I didn't, not a lot of, I was in a, yes, I was in a low life, very lonely. You were playing in a band called Wookie. Well, no, no, that was, that, that was, those were social times. I'm talking uh, about the recording of right. its third album, Country. Oh, those were dark days. Those were very dark days. I went out to that, I went out to that old Luke farmhouse. Luke a few sessions there, right? Yeah. I didn't, that you was. There was a horrible crank out there. We too. did, we did, we did, yes. Took full I, I, advantage of some people were road. some people were doing more corporal crank out there than others. <laughs> Remember, I think that's how I that. I, <laughs> the feral pens called narcotic. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, when when the when the when the when the sun went down out there, it got dark. It was it was like a it was it's stuff. A little bit rural. A bit rural. It's a it's a great community now. They're very. Suburban, um, but I'll tell you what—that was really fun. That was Star Girl. That was our uh, Bolshevik hit. Um, I'm going to get ready for another guest here, but uh, Luke, before we uh, uh, switch gears here, uh, do you uh, you want to say the Satin Chaps? Satin Chaps. That's that was huge. That now, was. I'm trying to recall. Weren't you singer and drummer? Singer and drummer. Now, uh, did you do that before? I think I did that in the, in the Bolsheviks well, a couple times. Yes, but that was uh, uh, by accident. Yeah. No, uh, when I yeah. When I that lyrics, yeah. <laughs> in there to take care of me. But yeah, the Satin Chaps was the project I started after uh, High Violets, and uh, that was like an eight piece instrumental go go soul band. Very and, and, uh, and, and uh, also porn a section. friend of our French Digger Productions, Talbot Guthrie. It's Talbot on percussion, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. Horn section, organ, sounded like a cross between, uh, I don't know, a Russ Meyer movie. It was like a combination between Russ Meyer and, uh, oh, I don't know, just groovy instrumental Scooby-Doo porn movie. Yes, yes. 
Uh, we, uh, there's, I think there's a video of yours on Trench Digger. Some, there's uh, probably one video we got out there. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay. And then uh, before we go to Africa, uh, you want anything you want plugged? You got a. Uh, uh, a project coming up. I, I got a I got a got a big project coming up uh, the weekend of October fifth, uh, sixth, and seventh. I think it's that. Uh, October fifth, sixth, and seventh. I think it's October. I think yeah, October sixth and seventh. I think that's the Saturday and Sunday. Myself, my friend Matt Stanger, our friend Jen Lane, my partner in crime Julie Madsen, our friend Michael Joyce, and a host of other. Fun people are going to be hosting a 24-hour live rendition of Louie Louie to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Kingsman's recording of Louie Louie, which also happens to fall on uh, Louie Louie Day, which is Portland's version of Louie Louie Day. We are going to be... Where, where did they record that version? They recorded it in Northwest... 13th and Burnside maybe I can't, re I can't remember exactly where Powell's is? yeah around there yeah. we're going to be doing this event at the Afru Gallery on 6th and Southeast Oak uh, next to Andy and Bax the idea is we're inviting as many bands and as many performers of all different styles to perform their version of Louie Louie our hope is to create one continuous version of Louie Louie with two back lines, so one performer starts, and then the next performer picks up, and we do that for 24 hours. You got some keyboards to play. We got it, we got, we'll have, we'll have so entire back lines, and um, keep in touch, um, get in touch with Trench Digger, get in touch with me, and if you want to, uh, not yet, we're, we're, coming, it, we're soon. coming soon, yeah, as soon as we yeah but, Big exclusive announcement. Louie Louie 24 hour marathon. I love it. I love it. What do you think, Steve? Do you think we can handle that for a little bit? Take a take an hour break or something? Take an hour off your hands? Yeah, you guys I I'm gonna get a full on ringer. Like I'm gonna get the full on like wrecking crew from like I'm gonna call it the twelve to uh, the the midnight to six thems yes. in in uh, in reverence to the uh, midnight to six men uh, pretty theme song. But the midnight to six thems are gonna be a selected group of musicians who are gonna be taking the midnight to six slot, and we're just gonna be. Because I don't, I think we, for safety reasons, we have to like, at some time during between, you know, the the dark dark hours, we're gonna have to like, not let anyone in right. or let anyone leave. I think that's uh, in Portland. That starts about nine p.m. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, yes. Uh, to all those, please. We're looking for your help. We're going to do some Louie Louie on, uh, the, again, October 6th and 7th. I believe those are the dates. Keep it, keep it, keep your eyes peeled for the 24 hours. Louis, Louis 24 hour Louis marathon. Louis do that at the Portland Marathon. The Louie Louie. A Louie Louie. It's a song. Hey, man, we're going to take a quick break here, and uh, we're going to be right back with our intern who has gone on to better things. Patrick. Worston's Pizza is everything you love about pizza. It starts with our golden crust. Of course, you're gonna want cheese on that. Then, it's whatever toppings you want. Pepperoni, always a favorite. How about the green peppers? You want something blue? No one ever put anything blue on a pizza, but it's colorful. Try the roasted garlic. And don't forget the black olives. We make them the way you want them. Worston's Pizza, Italian by marriage. Our pizza recipe comes from an ancient world, the beginnings of pizza itself, and it's proven and 
as delicious as time itself. Our pizza derives from the flu season region of Italy, a tiny pizza stronghold in the nation. If it's pizza you want, you find what satisfies you. Whether it's a specialty pizza or a creation you suggest, either way, your pizza will be made with flu season's impeccable pizza standards. Grab a flu season slice for lunch or a whole pizza when you're too tired to cook dinner. At flu season, pizza, old world pizza traditions, feed everybody! Okay, hey everybody, we're back, we're back. Um, I wanted to welcome a, a recent graduate, Mr. Patrick Cunningham in the house. And it was like, so we all left the building and 
and I looked behind me, and there was like big plumes of smoke just rising, and just like from behind this building, and it was like, uh oh, did the did the receiving section of the building catch on fire, and was it like a neighborhood behind a fire? And, and so we all evacuated. The fire was quickly put out. And I never actually saw the flames. And then, what yeah. was it? Yeah, I'm getting to it. Okay. Get up. Okay. Got 15 minutes paid. Just it, was it was the building though? Was it? It was the building. Yeah, I got paid 15 minutes to say sit, sit around in the parking lot, do nothing, and then then finally we got the all clear. And asked, what what kind of fire? And it turns out there was a trailer. In the dead end cul-de-sac street okay. behind the right. building, that caught on fire. Right. It was a meth lab trailer, like right. straight out of Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, was, that was the explosion. It wasn't, it wasn't a it building, was a, it, was the, it was the meth lab. Yeah, it was the trailer yeah, that yeah. caught fire. Yeah. It had been there for three, maybe four months or something like that. People knew it was there, people knew the meth was being cooked. Nobody did anything yeah. until one day it just caught fire and took care of itself that way. Oh, that's and, nature, isn't it? Yeah, it's a natural the, selection. From the meth, from the meth lab trailer, then it like the fire got really big, really hot. Like it's it, like it, like it, like like even the the chassis of the cars were starting to fall apart. Like it was a loud. It was just, like cold. See, that sounds more like thermite to me. Yeah. But yeah, it was like top. It was just like a show of its form versus itself, and and like it had like the fire had like gotten so hot that like it had like got got caught a tree on fire and it was really singed, and the tree was rushing against the building. Fortunately, the, the they didn't catch the other side of the tree. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's exciting. You're out in the parking lot for 15 minutes. Were you thinking like? Would that have been a better job than the one that you've been doing, or would you prefer to go back to your old job? Um, I don't think about cooking math as it's fun and all, but you might just get shot, and I don't want to deal with that. No, but you, you don't mind the hazmat and the chemicals, the, the violence, you know? Like. I mean, probably would be doing the hazmat and, like, my competition, because I'm more of a duo kind of person, but, like, They'd be like coming in or whatever, and I'd be like in a controlled asthma and stuff. And right. Well, and, and you're right, because a lot of people that get into fast off and start off with gas huffing. Uh, isn't that right, Luke? Is that where uh, you can use some gas huffers in your time? There's the rampant in Jasper. Yeah, yeah. I never got involved, but. Right. I, and you never like pumped your own when you're out of state? No, but I used to be a gas attendant. My first job was actually was a gas attendant at AMP and Mini Market on 42nd and Main in Springfield, Oregon. Okay. Now, there was some early time gas huffers yeah. and meth heads. I think back then they called them... Uh, uh, angels? <laughs> uh, dope no, fiends. Dope fiends. Dopers. So, in that wacky tobacco. Yeah, a lot of wacky tobacco. And... And just, yeah, Sweet doing... lotus flower. Yeah. So they were everywhere lotus out there. Drug things, which we, we do not support or advocate drug use uh, here unless it's uh, fair and available to everyone. That's kind of our motto. So. And, uh, yeah, uh, well, gosh, I, I guess... Wait, I don't want anyone left be feeling left out. No, no, and, and no one should. It's, uh, it's a good time. Um... Speaking of which, we're, we're, getting, uh, we're getting to a point where I like to uh, address the things going on in our community, uh, speaking about and uh, other substances. One in particular is fentanyl. And uh, I've kind of made up a new name for our mayor, Mayor Fentanyl, I'm thinking. Mayor Fentanyl. Mayor Tinny Fentanyl, because he must like it or something, because it's everywhere. I guess, oh! Oh, my lovely wife Jamila is here. Jamila, how, how are you, dear? What, you've been here the whole time, haven't you? It's so sweet. We did Star Girl for you. Yeah. You're not uh, mad about me talking smack on the old mayor there, are you? She's she's telling me to say good night, Jeff. So, good night, Jeff. Uh, people have been uh, <coughs> people have 
people been just commenting on my hairstyle lately, and I just want to, I just want to tell them that, uh, you know, this is, I think it's cool, and uh, I'm going with it. Um, and, you know, there's some other cool people that have this hairstyle. They, they did things like this.